Hey everyone, welcome to an episode in the React Foundation series. In this episode right here, I'm going to be showing you guys how to upgrade Webpack to version 2. Uh, so in this episode, we're not going to actually continue to build our app. We're just going to focus on the upgrade itself. So if, if those of you who have landed on our video, just you know, wanting to learn how to upgrade, um, this video series is uh, one of many videos uh, you know, that we show you how to build a React app from scratch. Uh, and we also have another series showing you guys how to build a Rails API to go with your React front end. So if you're interested in that, check out codemy.net, uh, become a member, and you get access to all our content. Uh, and if you just, just want to check out the upgrade video, feel free. Uh, so what we're going to do is I'm going to uh, head over into the terminal here. As you can see here, I have a Webpack 1.0. 13 running over here, uh, as you can see over here. And so what I'm going to do is I'm going to walk you guys through the process of upgrading uh, this app from being a React, uh, from being a Webpack 1.13 app into a Web Webpack 2.0 app. So I'm going to start off by just, uh, you know, this is just a, a regular npm run dev or npm start. Um, if you want, you can follow along using our Webpack starter kit in our GitHub page. So uh, github.codemy.com slash codemy, and then a web uh, starter kit. So if you go here and you clone this project, uh, you'll get uh, Webpack uh, 13. So we're going to upgrade uh, Webpack 1.13 into Webpack 2.0. All right, so let's start. Uh, so I'm going to do a yarn upgrade Webpack. And what that's going to do is it's going to resolve the dependencies and upgrade our Webpack to version 2. Uh, NP oh, yarn upgrade Webpack dev server. And then we need to also do a um, yarn upgrade extract text Webpack plugin. Uh, so we need to upgrade these three things. As we can see over here, it complains. Uh, and once we've done that, you'll see it stops complaining about anything. Now let's take a look at a package.json and see what we have. So I'm going to head over to the pa uh, package.json over here. And you'll see that Webpack has been upgraded to 2.2.1. Uh, the dev server has been upgraded to 2.4.1. Uh, and uh, and the extract text plugin has been upgraded to 2.1 as well. So what we're going to be doing next is taking a look at our config file here, and then just slowly, uh, you know, working through the process over here. Um, now, uh, what I have done is I have done a uh, you know I've done an upgrade already, and uh, basically you know I stashed it in with Git, and then basically so I have the diffs over here to show you what's new. Uh, so we're going to start off here with the babel.rc. Why do we need to add a babel.rc? Because now uh, with Webpack 2, we don't need to pre-compile uh, and upgrade our uh, modules. So what we're going to do is, you know, over here, we'll have this preset, which means Webpack is no, uh, lo no longer going to compile uh, ES 2015 uh, modules to be compatible with the new versions uh, that we're going to be using. And that's going to save up a lot of uh, compilation stuff. So if you take a look at the console over here, you'll see that, you know, when it actually compiles, it actually upgrades a lot of our packages here, which, you know, it's rebuilding a lot of the modules that we actually uh, you get from NPM. Uh, and so Webpack is going to eliminate, Webpack 2 is going to eliminate a lot of this stuff. Like, so, you know, uh, modules written in ES 2015 will be compatible with Webpack. Uh, so all this that you're seeing on the left-hand side, it's going to go away if we add this Babel RC. So let's go back over here. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to copy this part over here, and I'm going to walk you guys through the uh, config. Uh, so I'm going to add a new file here. So I'm going to go File, New File, and then paste in the Babel RC here. Remove all the plus. All right, so let's rename that to .babel RC. Um, so as we can see here, uh, you know it's no longer going to compile ES2015 packages. Um, yeah, so that's going to speed up the compilation of our Webpack 2 application uh, by just adding this file here. Uh, so let's continue. Uh, I'm going to get back into here. So what we need to do is um, 
we need to also change a few configurations in the Webpack config file. Uh, so let's start off with this part over here. So you can see here in the output, uh, we need to change the chunk file name to chunk file name with the lowercase n. So let's start off with that. I'm going to head over here. So chunk file name now becomes chunk file name like that. Uh, so those are minor changes. Also, you'll notice that the colors option is no longer valid in the new Webpack dev server. So we'll remove that. Uh, and so resolve module directories now just become modules. So uh, the next change we're going to do is in the loaders area over here. So let's take a look at the um, at the config over here. So you'll see that now we, the loaders actually change from loaders to rules. So over here, uh, so we're going to do uh, just that. And then basically now we also have to use use uh, instead of just uh, you know having something like loaders. Uh, so we'll change that. Let's head over back into the code. Uh, so I'm going to change loaders to rules. And then uh, the loader, uh, this one is fine because we have, uh, actually, we're going to change this because now it's using style and CSS. So now what we need to do is you just use. And then we have an array. And then we have style loader. Another thing is you cannot use the shorthand loader, uh, you know, the shorthand name of the loader anymore, which is to omit the loader. You need to actually type in the hyphen loader as well. And then we have the CSS loader. All right. And then we remove this old stuff over here. That looks pretty good. All right, so the, for the SAS stuff, it's going to be a little bit more complicated because we have all of this options over here. Uh, so we need to be able to accommodate all of that. Uh, so I'm going to change this part here to uh, use. And then here we're going to have uh, the first one is loader, style loader. And then for the second one, uh, we're going to do the CSS. So loader, CSS, loader. And now uh, there's a, a clause called options. So we can pass in the options. So for example, now we can do modules. True. And then here, we need to do import loaders 1 and local ident name. And then basically, we need to copy this hash over here, all of this string uh, into here. So this is the new config style that we have to work with. All right, so now that we're done with this part, we need to add the SAS loader as well. So let's add one more. And here we have loader, SAS loader, comma, and then we have uh, the options as well. So basically down here, the SAS loader uh, options come up. So we remove all the SAS loader stuff. Uh, so you'll see that it's a little bit more contained. Uh, it's it's actually quite a lot better than you know having stuff all over the place. And now we have options, uh, and yeah, that include paths should work just fine. Uh, let's see what else we need to remove. We can remove all of the stuff here and put a comma there, and that should fix a lot of the issues. So we actually need to close this one first. So let's do that. All right, so that that's good. Uh, so now we need to close this array like that. And that closes that one there. That's good. All right, so now we need to add the Babel loader as well for the JavaScript stuff. And uh, yeah, I think this is going to work. Um, let's give this a go. I don't think I missed anything. So let's remove these underscore. All right, that should be a little bit simpler. Ah, so it's complaining about the indentation. So let me just do that real quick. All right, and that goes back like that. And that goes like that. And then this can close the array out like that here. 
All right, so that looks pretty good. Um, I don't see any issues now. That's pretty much really all we need to do. Let's give this a whirl and see what happens. So I'm going to head back over here, close this out. So NPM start. And looks good. Webpack loaded. Let's see if it compiles. So far, so good. So it compiles successfully. Uh, let's hit the server and see. There we go. So everything is working. Uh, just based on those changes. And as you can see here, um, it's no longer compiling all the uh, modules that we have, the ES 2015 modules that we have that we imported. Uh, it's just compiling our actual code, uh, which, you know, it's, it, it's a lot less work for the computer to do. So it's, it's a lot better. Uh, it's a lot faster. Uh, so this is uh, pretty cool. Uh, Webpack 2 upgraded successfully. Uh, if you guys have any questions, leave them in the comments below. I'll help you guys out. Also, read the Webpack official documentation on upgrading. Very, very helpful. That's how I basically uh, got all this working again. Uh, so without any further ado, I am going to sign off. But before I do, sign up for our membership program. It's just 9 bucks a month. Uh, you're going to get all of our content for just 9 bucks a month. React, Rails API. Um, and uh, the Rails Foundation course. We also have a Docker, if you're into that stuff, the DevOps stuff. Uh, you know, we get we show you how to deploy Docker into production. Uh, with that, I'm going to wrap it up. Subscribe, like, and share our video if you found this useful. See you guys in the next episode.